Hello, all you beautiful stars of the morning. It's probably nighttime where you are. So shine, 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 it doesn't matter. I am here with Lucky Smith. I like calling him Mr. Smith. <laughs> or, <laughs> we are actually going to discuss just the fundamentals, guys. The, just the simple basics to any spiritual growth, development, learning, healing. We're just going to talk about that because why? It's the fundamentals. But before we get into that, Lucky, what would be your definition of spiritual awakening? Hmm. Well, spiritual awakening, I believe, would be you're in tune with yourself to such a point where you don't need to judge others because you know, a lot of times when we judge others, it's actually the things we judge about others are the things that we dislike secretly about ourselves. Mm. So if you're spiritually awakened, you are in tune with what's inside yourself. You don't know everything, but you're aware of what you truly are and also what you need to battle, what your little battles are. And when you meet someone that you don't feel quite right about, you don't judge them. You think about why does this bother me? Is it part of myself or is it something that I want to address in life? You know, that's to me, because a lot of spiritually awakened people, they lose you, they use a lot of judgment. Why aren't people enlightened like I am? Why aren't people aware like I am? And it, and it just goes down to like one of the big things is I, I, I say a lot of times is that even the most unenlightened person has something to teach me. Yes. Um, yeah. if, and me, me by calling them unenlightened is a judgmental thing to say. But from my point of view, um, I think I know better spiritually and they're less spiritual. But again, I can learn something. And that to me, that would be my most ideal enlightened mind. If I could, everyone I meet, that little judgment part is quieter. Because yeah. it's never going to be quiet. As a physical body, you can never quiet the judgment, the ego but you can work with it and be attuned with your that. ego. And that's my favorite thing is to be attuned with my ego. I'm hearing, wow. And I, that was like the first, that, ooh, no one's ever answered it like that. Um, I hope you all caught that. Um, I'm hearing not only just the mirror aspect of, you know, we are all mirrors of each other. And it Absolutely. is true. Like if I'm, if I'm not driving with something in you, I got to look back at myself. Um, but I, I hear a lot of self-acceptance. If I can accept some of the good, bad, and ugly within me, if I can accept me for who I am today, today, oh. then that means I can also allow myself and others to be who they are. I can accept where they are today. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that, man, lucky if you can, if you can do that, <laughs> um, that is, that's a massive awakening. Um, so that's beautiful because it's true. And also the whole, I, I don't want to say ignorant or, or unawakened or, mm -hmm. um, maybe different points of view, maybe that's a better way aware, yeah. Differently yeah. aware, yes. Awareness. Yeah. Um, we can learn from them all the time, actually. Yeah, yes. it's not like they're coming up with stuff out of nowhere, out of thin air, that we can learn from them as well. And oftentimes I do think certain little, you know, kernels of all of our awakening processes actually come out of that. You know, you're, with a group of people, somebody says something that your first reaction is, oh, that guy's an idiot, or, oh, I hate yeah. that. Or, and then by the time you're driving home and you're playing the whole thing back in your head, it's like, oh man, I see where he's coming from. Exactly. I, you know, so yeah, I, wow, what an answer, lucky. <laughs> it's more like a goal than actually actually working towards achieving it it's 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 one of those things is honestly also to be quite honest when i'm at a certain part of in my life or in the day 
I can attune with my higher self much easier. Like um, I worked all last night. So this morning to prepare for what's going on, I meditated. So I meditated for a while rather than sleeping for a short time and napping, I actually meditated. And that puts me in a different mindset where, so I'm actually already pretty close to my higher self. So I can get some of these messages and, you know, clearer picture of, what the best answer would be or the best thought process. And again, being an enlightened person is more like the high goal than an actual, you know, achievable thing day to day. Yeah, what people actually see and even how we feel or operate throughout our day. Because I, I think too, you know, as we're, because we're going to talk about the fundamentals, which I love how you brought up meditation. <clears throat> everything kind of goes in waves as well. Because we are exactly. so we've oh, cleared out all of our purging and baggage and hurts and and if somebody you know rubs you the wrong way, and it can also be energy. Sometimes I've realized my energy might just not mix with somebody else's. That doesn't make Absolutely. that wrong. That just makes it that our energies don't mix. I mean, oil and vinegar, sure. <laughs> That doesn't mean exactly. it's bad. Exactly. You know what I mean? So um, you did bring up meditation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do you use that on a regular basis? Almost daily. I would say daily. Actually, multiple times a day. Because to me, meditation is not one thing. It's multiple different ideas. Because I can be the perfect sitting meditation. Like, just like this, I'm meditating. Mm -hmm. That's what everyone sees in meditation. But there's walking meditation where even at work, when I need to take a few minutes, I'll take 10, 15, yeah. 20 minutes where I'll just walk the building or I'll walk outside around the building yeah. and I'll clear my head. And one of the things in meditation is, uh, the ideal meditation is not to uh, clear your mind, right. but to allow the mind just to flow. And one of the, yeah. one of the images that I got was a um, meditation expert told me, it's like sitting next to a, a stream or a river and watching the leaves and the sticks go by and you don't interact with them. And as each idea, as each thought, as each memory comes by, you just watch it go by. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Okay. Thank you very much for the memory. Go by. Um, rather than engaging it and going, you know, like, you know, you made a mistake because a lot of times in meditation, your mistakes come and think, ha, 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 ha. You know, yeah, uh, right. you, you did this horrible thing. Remember this? Remember this? Or this thing happened to you. Remember this? Remember this? Or and problems then you want to it. solve. For me, it's problems to solve. Like, exactly. oh, are you going to solve the world today, Courtney? And it's like, exactly. no. <laughs> it, and, and the idea of meditation is to just go, oh, thank you for that. But not now. And you let it go rather than yeah. engaging, going, oh, we can do this, get this, and, and go off on this tangent. You don't need the tangent. You just let it go. And you can deal with it later. Uh, one of my meditations, when I had, when, when one of my images, I said, but for me, I'm not next to a nice smooth river. I'm next to, uh, you know, class five rapids that are going, that, that's my mind. And he goes, that's fine. That's and fine. I'm like, but, but that's my mind. <laughs> that's yeah, my yeah, mind. Right. That's how it's going by. He goes, but you have to just sit and just let everything pass. Yeah. And as the oh, kayaker goes sure. by, you don't have to help that kayaker. He knows what he's doing. I'm like, Oh boy, wow, that's amazing. You know, because the kayaker will go by and he, if I interact with him, I'm going to put him in, in, you know, peril. So yeah. he needs to go by and go. So that, so even though it looks like a horrible thing to me, uh, it's better for me to, as it what goes past. And yeah. he said that, you know, before meditation, you know what your problems are. You know what you're going to, you know, might come up. You write them down, like, I will deal with these uh, at a later time after meditation. And you write down the problems. You meditate, and as they come up, if, if they still won't go away, you come back on meditation, you write down again until you get your pure 10 minutes of letting the thoughts go by. Oh, and that's, wow. Nice practice. I've heard, I, I have heard that before, but I completely forgot about it, honestly. That's a nice practice, especially for people that are beginning. Yes. All, yeah, always Definitely. keep a notebook with you at all times so that when these little things come up, um, because you're in your meditation and if you're a normal human being you're like your little ego will say you want to address that you never address yeah. this but you can no i wrote it down i'll address it really oh, you're, you're gonna right. forget no i wrote it down so that, so you'll actually 
will be working with your ego rather than fighting with your ego saying, hey, ego, I will address this. I wrote it down. I will not forget yeah. this time. Yeah, ego and thing. inner child, all sorts oh. of stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's actually a really good point. So I, of course, I love meditation. And right. I, um, I do think for, for me personally, and I try to spread the message that for, in my humble belief, the, the two things that you need most for any spiritual growth is meditation and gratitude. And we'll, I guess we'll get to gratitude in a minute. Because for me, meditation, I like how you said it could be walking. It could be all sorts of stuff. Because I will tell you, if if my fire is not in love and light, my fire is in rage and anger. Because <laughs> it can happen. Go again. Um, I then have to go out into nature and walk it off. And yes, within 15, 20 minutes, it is all gone. I'm, mm -hmm. thank you for cooling me down. You know, that is a form of meditation. Um, I also, I mean, I practice like what the monks did when I, I've never owned a dishwasher, never one. These are my dishwashers. So is this, mm -hmm. like, because it's a simple task that I'm just, I'm just meditating. I'm just mm -hmm. in meditation. It's mm -hmm. what the monks would do, doing laundry or working in the garden, garden. No, the garden is definitely meditation. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's interesting because a lot of people, especially when they start with meditating, either that's, there's two things that kind of, I think, hold them back. The whole, I have to sit like this and be perfect and, you know, or what do I do with all these thoughts? Mm -hmm. So that was a, a, an awesome example of just, just let them go. And I have to say, Lucky, even if yours is, you know, a rushing waters, after a little bit, no, it slows down. It'll slow yeah. down and become much more calm. Yeah. Right, exactly. My metaphor is like I move downstream where there are less rocks in, in the stream. So right. uh, your mind, you for upstream, but it's okay. And then you move downstream to actually calmer, smoother water. Right. And, you know, but... You know, it depends where you are on the stream. And one thing is a big thing is that's okay. Whenever you're in meditation, the whole idea is that's okay. Right. And that one thing is this whatever happens, it's fine. I'm calm, I'm relaxed. Right. Or even if you start crying, I have I've had so many people in meditation classes that, you know, it's their first couple of times really trying. And they start crying and they felt so bad for that. And I'm thinking oh, that's, the best, that's the best release you're actually releasing. And it's not bothering anyone else. You're doing fine. If you need to take a minute, go take mm -hmm. a minute, come on back. And because that's, especially when we first start, it's all, it is all these thoughts, all these feelings. And so the idea of writing them down is great. You can always break your meditation and write them down. I'll, I'll handle that when I have my conscience mm -hmm. fully intact. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And there's no shame. No, you don't have to do anything the way it looks on TV or what, mm -hmm. I, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's a myth. In that's, that. that's my biggest problem is like, oh, that doesn't work. So you, you'll, you'll learn meditation from someone else. And oh, that doesn't meditation doesn't work for me. That's because that person's meditation that is perfectly fine and perfect in every way for them might not work for you. Right. So you have to either modify it or just go to someone else's meditation because every meditation is just a foundation, just a beginning. Right. And you'll find your perfect meditation. You'll change it, and that's fine because everyone is a different individual. Again. Once you're attuned with yourself and you accept who you are. And another thing is that um, when I was teaching someone to meditate and they were crying about it and they were apologizing and I'm like, no, no, don't use apology. Say thank you. Cause you said gratitude. And that's one of the things is that I always put in, but never even thought about But Joe, just say, thank you. Thank you. Say, say thank you to me. Thank you to yourself. Thank you to the spirits for allowing you to have this. Yeah. Never say you're sorry because a sorry is doubt, sorry is regret. You don't need regret. You need to release it and say, thank you for allowing yeah. me to have this experience. Yeah. And uh, I had a friend who was 
very part he's a very powerful spiritual individual but he lives a normal life and we did a meditation in his he had his hemp house was empty and his house was haunted i didn't tell him that i knew it because i know spirits i meet with spirits they're not a big deal <laughs> go ahead like you were doing a meditation because so we're meditated. not going to get into the spirits guys so you know lucky does communicate a lot and i adore him for it right and then we could always end up going that way so we're going to go back yeah. this way <laughs> yeah. this is very short what happened was he meditated he got in a perfect i used a candle he focused on the candle he came perfectly calm i told him this you know, to ground with Mother Earth and get source yeah. energy. I think, I think in God in heaven, he connected, he expanded and filled his house. I showed him how to protect oh, his house before yeah. he met, before he even start to meditate, put the bubble of protection around. And it sounded like, to me, like a bunch of pencils dropped on a hardwood floor. Mm. He had all carpeting in his house. Crash, you know, a bunch, bunch of pencils like sticks. But he's like, his eyes went wide open. And he's like, what was that? I was like, it's all fine. It's all calm. You freed your house from an energy. It's fine. They're gone now. And now you have to continue the protection. And then we're going to go. I went through the whole thing. It took about an hour to get him to pretty calm, clear his head. I taught him how to meditate, which I told oh, him for now on. Sorry, let me cut you off for a minute, Lucky, because you've said a lot of good things. So <laughs> I want you have, and you said them all. So First, I want to make, I, I kind of want to say just for a moment, that concept of going back to accepting yourself. Absolutely. Also, we need to accept whatever form of meditation works for us uh, and whatever form of meditation works for others. That mm -hmm. is very key because, yes, what, what works for me is not going to be the same that works for you. And like my body, here's an example. I don't do yoga, guys because my body is actually not meant to do that. I work out, I get things done, but my body is not built the same as where that tradition came from. It's just not, I'm not supposed to be doing that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that I think it's beautiful. I think it's amazing. It's just not healthy for my body. Um, and that's the kind of thing. So we have to also respect other people's forms. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, what you're moving into, Lucky, with that story about your friend and things, you know, something left the house, is the impact of when you really start to develop your skill, your gift of meditation, or that tool, that skill, in whatever various ways, it can start to develop into, oh, yeah, you can protect your house, you can protect yourself, you can cleanse your spaces, you can all different varieties of usefulness and not even just the enlightened aspect of it and the release of it the, mm -hmm. the chill factor the grounding factor the more we ground and meditate the more we can go out and handle life out there in the world you know so you were you you <laughs> you jump right into the like the hardcore like and when you get to this level, you can do that. So I just wanted to tell people it is possible. It is very yeah. possible. That's why his meditation, initial first meditation, took me a full hour to go through because yeah. I was trying to go through the different stages and trying to get him to relax. Yeah. And because he was, I got to a point where he was sensing that the spirits, where he wasn't ready to, I wanted to free and make it you're in a safe space you're in a relaxed space and yeah. you're in control you're in control of your space you protect your space i'm not protecting your space you're protecting your space because i think it's important part is to be empowered you know i don't want um to tell somebody my dogma that i might have developed from my perception right. i want him to develop his own and i had different ideas and and even though we were close friends you know we're different ideas you know he was into karate i never did karate right. but he had different chi and um, yeah. eastern philosophies and i was just using that to help him and listening to him talk about what he saw and uh i, I actually got him That's to excellent to, i got him to converse with this, his guides um which is pretty quickly and then but that got into a huge tangent hey, which is this craziness lucky can i ask you because when you were talking then the this image of 
um, like somebody in a studio doing a meditation, um, but they're they're full of anxiety. Like I, uh-huh. I got that image of somebody when they're full of anxiety and then they start playing that tape of like, geez, you can't even calm down and meditate. You're such a rattle of impossibility. Uh-huh. Like that's what, didn't you? Cause I got, I just had that feeling. Um, didn't you suffer from anxiety for a long time? Yes. It, to me, it's cyclical. I, I would I would get it over with it and it would come back again. I would get it over it, it would come back again. It was like, um, yeah, honestly, for me, it was other people. My biggest anxiety is when I feel the energies of other people and I want to help fix them or relieve their anxiety or relieve their stress. And it became part of me. And, you know, uh, one of my biggest, the the affirmations, which is, um, I forgive uh, uh, others for sharing, you know, for for putting their baggage on me. And I forgive myself for uh, accepting that, that Mm -hmm. energy, negative energy upon myself. And that's one of the things is I, I will do that, or I used to do that. I try to that, try to be aware of that now. But again, for me, once I got aware, okay, I'm in completely tune with it, it became more of, you know, people would come to me when talk to me and use me as a, as a sounding board, as a counselor. And uh, I didn't know, you know, I'm not a counselor. I was never trained as a counselor. And that's one thing is that you have to do is you have to know your limits. Um, and that's one thing is I didn't know, which is sometimes you got to take yourself first. It's not narcissism to take yourself first because no. narcissists yeah. take themselves first at the expense of others. Right. You're taking yourself first with the idea is you're going to help because if you, as long as you're in the best place, you can help others. And for me, I wasn't in that place because I wanted to help everyone that could. And of course, that would just I hide my anxiety because, you know, you can't fix everybody. And oh, have I have I hurt them by by not being, you know, giving hey, them like, the right answers? Like, can you I'm sure the audience is probably, you know, there's members in the audience that suffer from anxiety. But can you describe to me? Here's the deal, Lucky. I don't really have, I've never, I shouldn't say never. The anxiety that I have experienced was definitely not mine. It would have been like global anxiety that it was like, right. what is this? So I am not familiar with anxiety. I have a whole bunch of other issues, people. I'm not perfect. But can you tell me what that feels like? Like energetic, yes. like in you? I don't know what that even really feels like. For me, it's like having a phobia. One thing is my best example is if you run into a bear, that fear, that cheer, terror. The thing about running into a bear is, oh, there's a bear. I can get away from it. Once you're away from the bear, the anxiety becomes less because your threat is gone. Anxiety is you have the fear of a bear. There is no bear. You don't know how to fix this. That's anxiety to me, which is just having that sheer terror and not knowing where to go with this, what the source of it. Um, for me, um, I have the weirdest phobia of Afghan hound dogs. If you've ever seen an Afghan hound dog, they look like a blonde woman, long flowing hair, beautiful. When I was four, I had my face ripped open by an Afghan hound. My, my mother bred them oh. and he, he, I guess he got into rat poison and he didn't recover very well. And my mother told me, Oh, bring him downstairs. And I brought him downstairs. He just lashed out and ripped my yeah. face wide open. And to this day, I have a um, terror of Afghan hound dogs to the point where I was at a dog park and there was a goofy Afghan hound and he was goofing around. And I just kind of walked away and someone's, you know, pit bull who I didn't know comes running towards me. And I went to the pit bull and patted the pet bull. They go, oh, I'm sorry, he's good. No, no, no. But to me, I'd rather pat uh, 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 an, an energetic pit bull. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, an unknown pit bull than someone who I actually knew this person's Afghan hound. But to me, that terror, you know, he's, he's found, I, I got to get away from this dog. And I'd rather go to the pit bull than the Afghan hound. Okay, and, so I, that's we, don't to me. Stand, we don't need to stay on the anxiety for a while, but I really do like that um, bear scenario so I can at least wrap my head around it I do have to say 
maybe I'm going to put you through it at some point, Lucky. I learned like at the age of 14, this really awesome psychological meditation that you can bring people through. And there's only like four elements to it. But each thing that they answer along the way, and the last one is, you come across a bear, what do you do? You know, in your imagery of your meditation, um, it represents something. It does, and so it represents what do you do in the face of fear? Mm -hmm. So I'll tell everybody, even at 14, my answer was, well, I stare that bear down until it knows I'm more powerful. So that's why I don't have anxiety. I have, right. I also have other psychological issues, people. <laughs> so yeah. So I got that because ever, most people, I mean, I get, I've done that questionnaire. I mean, I was even at Bonnaroo doing it to large groups of people because I was with, I was like collecting data for something I thought I was going to do in my twenties. Mm -hmm. um, most people, it is intense fear. It is intense anxiety it is intense so that is the majority of the population and i think meditation helps greatly with that like i so i was taught meditation not because of anxiety i was actually taught at a very young age because i suffered from nightmares nightmares that were connected to current life and past life it was getting very jumbled and they were very extreme to the point that little Courtney decided, well, if I just don't go to sleep, <laughs> it won't happen. And somebody caught on. What are you not? Why are you not sleeping? And so I was taught simple meditation, which I, I do want to throw out there. If anybody's listening with young children, oftentimes that is happening. So when they're having their cereal in the morning and they don't seem all put together, it might not always be bullying at school. It might not always be, you know, they didn't do their homework. It literally could be they had a nightmare that they're not able to process. Mm -hmm. And so that was my issue. And so they taught me meditation, very simple stuff you could do with a kid. And then I just loved it so much. I just kept going. Um, so it is good for anxiety, good for sleep, obviously good for what you said, connecting with your higher consciousness, your better version of yourself, your more clear-minded version of yourself, however you want to put it. Um, and then it can just keep going and going into, the, yeah, you can protect your house. You know, you can get all these downloads and really be able to hear them and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But you said affirmations, Lucky. I want to talk about affirmations because I got to tell you, um, I didn't really use affirmations like how most people do until just, I don't know, two or three years ago, because I never thought, oh, it's not going to really do anything for me. Oh, no, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I know you've been doing it for a long time to also help with the growth and the, the healing of the, of the anxiety and just for all positivity how do you what do you do like do you speak them it, see the thing is i'm a hoarder for minute for, for um affirmations i collect them and i i i have like this the, the, this i have two packs of these affirmations <laughs> and i need to separate them because i will spend over half an hour a day speaking all the different affirmations when i realized I'm going to break them up and make them 10 minutes a day because I don't need all these affirmations every day, but I love them. Um, but the thing about affirmations is I get them from, you know, our Wayne Steiger, Wayne Dyer. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, Tony Robbins. There are all these affirmations from different people. Yeah. And I take them and I write them myself. Um, it, but each one that I write down, either I type it on my, I usually write it down physically and then I type it on my computer, yeah. but I modify them because as I'm reading the app, even when they're written down to me, as I'm reading them, I change them um, because I think that gives them more power because it's my affirmation. Even though someone else wrote an affirmation, I made it mine and that makes it to me stronger. I'm told that spells that are most strong are ones that you physically write yourself. Yeah. 
but they also have to be in your own words, your own uh, perception, your own language. And for me, that's affirmations. You've got to just twist a little bit and make it yours because we're all different. Even though we might similar to other people, our energy is like this very, almost the same as other people. It's not the same. And you've got to make every affirmation your own. Um, Do you law see of attraction. affirmations like prayers in a way? Because I think that's how people could maybe relate it to. I'm, I'm trying to. I think affirmations are like snow where you don't, you're not in South, you don't know what snow, but. I do know those snow are, though. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I, I actually, but you know how you have the light fluffy snow and you have the, 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 the packed wet snow, and you have yeah. sleep. Different affirmations give me different things. Some affirmations are like prayer where I am connection with my higher self. I'm connecting with source. I'm connecting with creator God, not the God of the Bible, but the creator God who I think is above all gods. And yeah, right is, that's, another, that's, a, that's, that's a whole right mindset. On. We thing don't got to go there with this one, but right on, man. Yeah. Right. But there's affirmations directly to the creator God, affirmations to the, let's just say the Christian God or uh, uh, an angel. Affirmations working, I'm working with this angel, and that's an affirmation that we're connecting with this. And other affirmations like, this is how I want to be. This mm. is an affirmation of me saying, this is me now, and this is what I want to be now. It's um, different layers mm -hmm. of what the intent is, what the approach is, what the, okay. Right. One of my big affirmations is I am calm, I am relaxed, I'm in control, I am protected. That's what I say every day because I'm not calm all the time. Right. I, I'm a very hyper individual. At work, I tend to have you know uh, plates spinning on sticks around and I'm always blah, 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 blah. And people are like, how do you handle that? And I'm like, that's just how my mind works. And that's why my meditation with the rappers is because my mind is always active and I can think of four things at once. Multitasking is not a healthy mindset. I actually had someone, a boss come to me and said, we love people multitask. It's not the way to work. It, it might, it's all the managers seem is great to have multitasking employees, but always something falls. There's always a yeah, plate that drops. Exactly. Yeah. So you have to, rather than having four, you should only be in two. And that's one of the things is that, so my mind loves to have multiple things going on. My mind loves fixing things. If I'm in a moment of stress, High stress, I'm at my best. Low stress, sometimes I get frazzled because get for some reason, yeah, it's weird. So that's why if there's high stress, I'm, I'm not anxiety at all because right. we're fixing this path forward. If it's low stress when who knows what the end result's going to be, I am, I am stressed out. It's because, that, that concept of being, you know, being able to thrive in chaos. Or thriving yes. conflict, right? Um, see, for me, I I have the same thing, and really lucky. This is most likely because of how we grew up. You know what I mean? So my mind is still kind of wired that way too. Right. Um, and I think, I, guys, let's keep it real. The majority of ours, our minds are wired in ways like that. Mm -hmm. Um. And everybody responds differently, fight or flight, this and that, but our minds are really more wired that way. And, but I do think meditation can begin to unravel that, you know, right. really start calming down. And like with working with your anxiety, with me working on, on sleep, um, I also, you know, it's like I use meditation for everything, but the, the affirmations, Lucky, Mm -hmm. so I first you know it's like I learned about these mantra things it took me years before I accepted you to do a mantra mm -hmm. then I didn't even do like a typical like eastern mon mantra I did like a, actually I took a quotes from the bible at the time and just kept mm -hmm. repeating it just kept repeating it then oh that worked great that was awesome good stop doing it for some reason because <laughs> that's what we do as humans right mm -hmm. we we feel better so then we and then we end up stopping well then I actually um went 
just everybody about, I would say about four or five years ago, people were like affirmations, affirmations. I don't know. It was the hot word at the time. I, you know, that I just kept hearing. it. So then I started doing it. And yeah, lucky it changed. It, it is that concept that I think when we speak it, a, when we speak, we're manifesting all the time and it helps to do the rewiring of the brain. Meditation, rewiring the brain, affirmations, mm-hmm. rewire. And if we go back to ex- accepting ourselves and others, my affirmations help me do that. I will say though, I'm the complete opposite from lucky. It takes all kinds, people. I, ha- I don't have a single book. I don't have a single paper. I've never actually written a meditation down. If I wake up in the morning and I go, oh man, I should say something positive. I let whatever comes out of my mouth come out of my mouth. <laughs> and so you can do whatever you need to do. It's, it, I'm just trying to say, I love, I appreciate Lucky for all he is with his papers and his stacks. Cause I get to hear them often and it warms my heart and changes my day for me. Um, but for me, I'm how I am, just the personality I am, because that crazy mind that you talk about, Lucky, that's me in the morning. That's me for the first three, uh, whole three hours until I run myself pretty much tired. And then me at tired is like normal, (laughs) you know? So affirmations, I say what you need, how you, how you're going to love yourself that day, say what you need, all of it, say it loud and proud to all of it. That's how I do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that is, is the most powerful, powerful to say things that you need right now, because you're taking your perception and you're growing from it. You're having an affirmation that you, you've developed right now and what you need right now, and you're stating it, that's powerful because that is yours. Yeah. These affirmations that I got from other people, they're not as strong, but they give me a foundation for me yeah. to build upon. And like I said, uh, there's no right or wrong, but I'm saying that yours technically is better. But again, when you can't think well, of something right. to say, right. you, you can fall. Like I said, I have gone too much. Spending a half an hour a day is not right for affirmations. Yeah. Meditating for half an hour, which is what I should be doing, um, rather than do, actually I meditate and do the affirmations, which That's it's because it helps me my, with my anxiety. Yeah. But um, for affirmations, for me, I'm, this is sometimes you say things to, when you say things to help others, you're actually trying to help yourself. Your subconscious is telling you, hey, you got to pay attention to this. And for me, when I'm helping others and giving them the affirmations, I got to tell them, just because I have this many, you don't have this many. Don't do this. Right. Uh, you can have this many, but don't do them every day. You the, reason one every I day. Though, I, the reason I, though, do appreciate you having it printed out, because A, we get busy, we forget, mm-hmm. okay, or something threw us off our schedule, or we're in a crappy mood and nothing good is coming out of our head. So I do believe in having something that even if you're like, I don't know, affirmation or or, you you pick up that piece of paper and you read it. You just read it out loud, regardless of how you feel, because Mm -hmm. our, you know, our, I always say this, our words are not, our words do not have to be attached to our feelings. They do not have to be intentions usually always are Mm -hmm. our words though i mean i could literally be having such the most crappiest day but then the moment i turn this camera on i love you all Mm -hmm. usually that's not the case but you know what i mean you can turn it around by the words you say so i think having a book something ran down, something painted on your wall. I, I did do for a long time, I had sticky notes up in the bathroom mirror. Mm-hmm. I had sticky yes. notes kind of all over the place. I think we've all kind of heard this or seen it, you know, yeah. you know, love yourself today or whatever was written on that sticky note. 
Um, I did that for many, many a years. Um, Lucky, does it make you doing the affirmations, doing the meditation? And I, I do want to say it's awesome that you do a half an hour meditation every day. Buddy, I don't even do that. Mm -hmm. um, I, though, I strongly stress at least 10 minutes a day for yes, all sir. people. Actually, Stars of the Morning Light dot com has a completely free meditation podcast that is the majority of them are just 10 minutes mm -hmm. because at least 10 minutes before you leave for work or 10 minutes when the kids are not in the car and you're at the grocery store and you don't get out of the car yet take that 10 minutes you know take at least 10 minutes for yourself mm -hmm. in hardcore i'm just sitting and i'm meditating and i'm doing my thing that I don't do every day for a half an hour. I don't, but I mm -hmm. do it out in the garden. I do it all. I definitely wash the dishes every day, guys. You know, that's at least 20 minutes of me, you know, just doing the thing. So once you get into the practice, oh yeah, it, that energy, that ability to calm yourself, to rewire the mind, become whole again with full acceptance, that is always present. It just mm -hmm. takes that little bit of going. Mm -hmm. As far as affirmations, same thing. If you need to walk into the bathroom at work and say something to yourself just to feel better, do it. Do it, you know? I want to jump to, though, Lucky, because you kind of touched on it, gratitude, giving thanks, oh, yes. giving thanks. Mm -hmm. How important do you find that to be? Huge. Um, I always say thank you. Like one of, one of my affirmations is from, um, a man called Joshua P. Warren. He wrote a book, uh, use the force, a Jedi's guide to the law of attraction. How'd I get all that out of my head? Uh, and in it, he says, uh, I live in a friendly supportive universe that loves me and wants me to be happy and succeed. And I, he doesn't have this, but I say, thank you universe. Mm. And for me, um, yes, I live in a friendly universe, supportive universe. Yes, but thank you, universe, for putting, for working with me. And you don't have to say, you know, you can say God, you can say anything. But the point is, you want to thank. Uh, I, I'll also uh, affirmations when I work with angels to help influence my life, and I thank those angels. Uh, one of the things is a favor affirmation. Well, I will thank favor. I actually put favor as an energy being yeah. when I thank favor for being in my life because favor is a positive energy yeah, yeah. Um, well hey is, can I that's actually really cool because what popped in my head I was I was having a conversation with one of my he's really one of my best friends he's he's like a brother since we were yes. kids and when he was young he had faith and then for many 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 years now he's just been extremely lost with a lot of stuff um and the other night we were talking I said, you know, you should really maybe start praying again or some, you know, something. Mm -hmm. And he said, I don't know who I'd be even talking to. I don't know how to even go about that. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's okay. No, nobody really knows. I mean, the ultimate answer, nobody yes. really knows. So that's okay. That, that's fine, buddy. You know? And I said, it's the, it, the point is, is to try to connect and give thanks and so I just told him briefly I said and I said I'm trying not to say his name <laughs> I said to him um you know I said I I give thanks and appreciation to a whole bunch of stuff mm -hmm. the mother the father Gaia ancestors celestial beings of love and light lords masters guides I mean am I Am I hopefully pinpointing the good stuff and things that need to be present? Yes. And I think, honestly, I think that stops people as well. Kind of like the whole, I'm not the guru meditating correctly, so this is not for me. Or mm -hmm. I, my body doesn't really do yoga, so I obviously can't meditate. No, I think there we put things in our way. Same with, I'm not really sure who God is, so therefore... I don't know who I'm giving thanks to. Give thanks to you. I know when I first had to really look at gratitude, 
I didn't have anything. I didn't have, as I mean, I, by that point, I did not have a single concept in my head that I never, I had to start with, I'm grateful for this plate of food. I'm grateful for this cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. I had to go so simple with even attempting to think about gratitude, let alone any outside force sense of higher anything. I just did not have it. Mm-hmm. Um, and but now, I mean, gratitude gratitude has transformed my life. I really do. I think so. So I just wanted to piggyback off of what you were saying with that because I think that holds up a lot of people. I don't know what I'm praying to. I don't know what I'm grateful for. You know, who should I even say I'm grateful to? Don't let that hold you up. And like me, like I said, I was many, many moons ago, I was told to write a gratitude list. I couldn't do it for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And I was going around and talking to a bunch of people. Why should I do that? What's that going to do? I don't understand. You really think I should do that? I don't need that. You know, and and what it really boiled down to for me was a I couldn't really identify all oh, this great source and then everybody was like keep it simple and I also did not feel worthy enough to be grateful so I did I mean it was like yeah I'm grateful for that. my first list was I'm grateful for this cup of coffee I'm grateful for being able to brush my teeth I'm grateful for the shower I think it was something else like real, like it might've been like, I'm grateful for the TV I'm watching. Like it literally might've been something that nobody, you know, pays attention to. Um, And it was only about five things. And then every day, every day I added on. And then I would say to myself, as I was brushing my teeth, because it it brushing my teeth reminded me in the morning, Oh, I'm grateful for this. What else am I grateful for? All the coffee that just stained my teeth. And like, I just had to keep doing that. And now I use that gratitude list for everything. If my blood starts boiling and my fire is going in the wrong direction, gratitude list, who calms me down. If I'm having a day that the world is just looking really drastically bad, who gratitude list calms me down. Mm-hmm. You know, everything everything so how how do you use yours to like what do you how do you use it like wh- how do you, what do you get out of it the most honestly to me gratitude is all parts of my day uh if i find a penny i pick it up to thank you for you know the monetary abundance it's a penny but it just it just it puts you in the right mindset if i'm working with somebody and they do something that will help. I appreciate, you know, your time, you know, and it's, it's a mindset where yeah. you're going to have to bring it in. Cause a lot of people, especially this is a biggest thing is like, um, retail industry. I hate Walmart. I despise yeah. Walmart. But when I'm, when I have to go, I always talk to the cashier. I talk to people. Oh, thank yeah. you. Have a great day. I, you know, thank you for your time. Or if I go for get some help from somebody, I appreciate it. Oh, thank you for helping me with this little tiny thing. Because these people get no respect at all. Yeah, exactly. And if I can give them a little respect, it, it really brings their day up and brings me up. Um, especially people who are, I, I, I have actually stood at a dollar store. Um, there was a guy who's the scrunt of the doll store with the doll 25. And this poor girl is just stocking shelves. And this guy is going on and on and on and on and on. And I just stayed away, you know, and um, and then he eventually got sick of it and, and walked out of the store. And I told her, thank you for taking the time to, to deal with that guy. I know it was hard for you, but you did a really good job. And she starts crying oh. because she says, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I said, you did everything right. You, you listen to him and now you can just let it go. You can release it. And, you know, cause now he's vented and you don't need it on yourself. And she's like, 
who are you? And you know, why do you do this? You know, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I know. I'm lucky. <laughs> I told her I've worked, I've, I've worked in, I never worked in retail. I worked at a pet shop. That's as far as I went. I said, I worked in retail. I know how it is. And, but you don't need that baggage. And that guy needed to vent. He vented on you. You don't need that. You did a good job. You're just doing your job, stacking shelves. You work so hard. Um, Cause I've seen her, she's been cashier. You've been so nice every day and you don't yeah. need that kind of baggage. And again, sometimes we just like, we got to go through our day. I'm not, oh my God, that, that cashier, that poor girl. That's not my problem. I'm getting out of here. No, I waited around till the guy left because yeah. there was not much I could do. Cause I, I did walk over and say, she has no control. And he looked at me like I, I spit on his face, but I'm like, okay, you know what? And I walked away. And I waited for the moment to go back to her because, you know, she was just stocking shelves as he's talking to her because she couldn't yeah. do anything about it. She couldn't um, do anything about it, yeah. You know, and she, she's got a, you know, thing. So I turned it around saying, since I couldn't help make him go away from her, I'll wait around and, and go to the back end and help her at the end, you know, but. That's, am- okay, so hold on. That's amazing. So I use mine mostly to calm me. And don't get me wrong. I tell people, thank you. But I do mine mostly to call me um, because let's just keep it real. If I'm a whole lot of love and light, I also have the potential to not be. Let's say that. So I use it to call me and you use yours to kind of always be in that mindset. So when the situation is presented that others need a thank you, an appreciation, a maybe a helpful hand or something you're already in that mindset to have the willingness to to just be to just do it honestly Uh, it's a bigger picture because i absorb people's energy anyways i enjoy their emotions so by going to her and being aware of that i'm absorbing some of her emotions just by being near her i'm circumventing it and putting her in a better mindset to put myself to prevent myself from picking up her emotions it's it's not selfish but it's kind of no, no, it I, was, I'm, it's yeah. self-protection which is not you know right. and you're doing if you have to do self-protection or because you are an extreme empath or whatever it may be right that's the healthy i'm pointing at lucky right now that's right. the healthy way to go about it that's the more mature right positive in light and love than protection in some cuckoo crazy other ways or Mm -hmm. feeling like you have to fight for protection you know what I mean like love can also be the best protection as well right so honest lucky I'm gonna have my husband read this or read this (laughs) um listen to this because he he's an extreme empath and for him to go into stores to do anything like that, it is too much for him. But I know he's not practicing, like not saying he's not grateful. That's not. No, no, no. To, no. to even the most, you know, I picked up a penny. Awesome. Thank you for the favor and prosperity in this moment. You know, even the smallest little things to just rewire. And I, that's, I really like that, that you're using the tool of gratitude and giving thanks because we can give it to anything or anyone at mm-hmm. any time. Guys, every time my dog is like walking and he does something I need him to do, I tell him, thank you. Exactly. Every time. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, because he's a bean. You know what I mean? I'll t- The bugs that if they stop crawling around on my plants, if they move away, I tell it, thank you. Right. right. You know what I mean? Thank you is for everyone and everything. Um, and I, for me, so I was thinking when you were talking to Lucky, so we've established meditation, gratitude, and affirmation. And I always, for me, would say like meditation and gratitude were like the cornerstones or pillars, the foundation, what have you, of spiritual growth but I also like having affirmations there and Mm -hmm. how I'm seeing it is right now like meditation is because you know 
really use it a lot for grounding. Meditation connects you. Affirmations are for you personally. Mm -hmm. And gratitude is for service to others, for all beings. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like meditation connects you to the planet and all beings because we need the connection. If we didn't have the sense of connection, none of this would matter. And that goes for good connection, bad connection. If we didn't have the sense, it wouldn't matter. We would, nobody would, we'd be robots, Mm -hmm. you know? So meditation connects. Affirmations is for self, self self-love. So then we can have gratitude and show our love to other people, places and things. I, that's how, like, that's kind of, I've never seen it that way until just now, but that's kind of how it kind of gelled with me that, yeah, that would be like, I don't know. I think that that works great. That would be there. That'd be a trying. Oh, it's a pyramid, Lucky. We just made a pyramid, Lucky. Oh, it's gonna. That's Courtney's new pyramid. Oh, guys, me and my pyramids. (laughs) So what do we got? We got, uh, well, let's say affirmations up here because we always got to take care of ourselves. And then we got like gratitude down here. We got Mm -hmm. meditation down here. You're a whole being growing in light and love. I love it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to add that to whatever I do with pyramids all the time. <laughs> Huge. Lucky's like, oh man, I have so many thoughts, but it'll go off in tangents. Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> no, I was also thinking about uh, gratitude because I don't watch TV, but I watch a hell of a lot of YouTube. I watch YouTube all the time. And I'm like, every video I watch, I always put a thumbs up because, oh. or it, sometimes I put thumbs down because they got to know if it's a terrible video. But for the most part, I put a thumbs up for, because I want them to know. But, you know, if it's a really good video, I have to write some comment to say, because oh, yeah. it really helps. And for, for YouTube, that's gold. Yeah, th- there's Patreon to subscribe, everything, but. The thumbs and the comments are, are what feed the algorithm, which helps people spread their videos around. And I always make sure I do that. And that's an and a, a act of gratitude, you know, just, yeah. you know, these little things. Um, also, if I, if I read someone's book and I enjoy it, I'll write them a little email, not too long, because honestly, yeah. these people, they probably get, some of them are famous and they get lots of emails. But if you get a short, succinct email saying, thank you for your book, um, I learned a lot from it and put a small thing what I learned yeah. and I sent it to them. And sometimes I get no answers. Sometimes I get this huge thing. Thank you so much for, for, you know, for your email with the book and da, da, da. But again, you, if you make a little effort to everything that really improved your life, it kind of, it, it comes back to you stronger, more positive. Yeah. It's, it, you can find uh, being positive and being grateful so many times in your life. If you just pay attention to, Hey, this is an opportunity to be grateful. I think that's great because I was just thinking also, it's so much easier to do that stuff when we have the meditation and the, and the, the I mean, I, I guess I'm repeating myself, but, you know, affirmations really are for us in a way that we can go out and face life depending whatever life circumstances are. And I hate putting it that way, but you know, like me, I don't, me and Walmart, we don't drive either that well. Cause I just, it's not so much that I'm taking in everybody's energy. It's that it's just a nuisance. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just a nuisance for me. Um, but it's what you have to do. But affirmations, like if that's what I got to do today, I'm going to go shopping. I'm going to be so grateful. I got enough money in my wallet to make it happen. Cause I'm going to care, you know, like all that sort of stuff. And, but that makes it that I'm able to serve the world better. And I, I, it's all about that for me. I just, I know I keep repeating myself, but it is all about that. The connections with us helping others, but we got to help ourselves first. This has been so beautiful these are lucky do you feel 
I guess I'll go one more little question. Do you feel like there's anything else that really needs to be like a foundation to the beginning of any spiritual practice or growth? The newbies to the, the new age awakening wonder? For me, one of the most important things is in meditation, the big faux pas, the big no-no is falling asleep. Mm. I've told people, don't worry about it. You fall asleep. If you need to lay down to learn to meditate and you fall asleep, that's fine. You're yeah. building a foundation. It's okay. I I've seen so many times, it's like, oh, you got to do this and things. You never fall asleep. You don't want to fall asleep. It ruins the meditation. No, you're meditating to clear your mind. If your mind is so clear that you can get to sleep, that's the beginning of your journey. Don't yeah. worry about falling asleep. Don't worry about the mistakes you've made in meditations because you're experimenting with this. And that's the big, huge hurdle with meditation with people in the beginning is I can't do it right. I'm doing it wrong. I'm falling asleep. Oh, I don't even know. And you have to say, no, you're doing it right. You're doing it right for you at this moment. You're going to grow from it. Yeah. And um, like I said, that's okay. That's one of my big, because that's how I got over these little hurdles is no, that's okay. That's you know, okay. and then, um, Mistakes are made, but they're not a huge error if you learn from them. Yeah. So mistakes are learning opportunities. And as long as they're learning opportunities, they're very little problem in your life. Very little problem. And I thank you for bringing that up, the sleep thing, because for most people, when they start meditating, if they fall asleep, it's because that's what they need. Absolutely. They're, they're choosing to try to meditate for a reason. Right. And if your body ends up falling asleep, it's because that is what it needs. Of just keep doing it and eventually at one point you're going to stay awake because you have now caught up on the sleep that your body needs so just keep going just keep going have gratitude give a, appreciation to all beings that either you know or don't know and uh, meditate and um, affirmations, personal affirmations. Let's build that pyramid. I'm loving that. I'm loving it. The yeah, three, three, the three, it's got to be up above, in, within, and around. That is what it takes, up above, within, and around. And I think all of that works really well with it. Well, Mr. Lucky, even though you said don't bring them to your, your channel, I have to say all those beautiful packets of affirmations that uh, he held up, Lucky Smith does have a channel. What is it? Who knows? Is it Lucky's <laughs> wonderful spirit just doing what he wants? Yes. Occasionally, though, and you can always go back and replay, he reads those affirmations, guys. I love it. He tends to be on while I'm doing my dishes. See, you're even helping me more meditate. Um, and so I really enjoy it. It will be below. Go and listen. Listen to the best affirmation one that you like, and then just keep listening. Because that also helps. If you can't read one right away, if you can't, there now so many people are auditory, so many people. Mm -hmm. and listen to affirmations and this guy here reads some great ones so lucky thank you oh thank uh, you this has been fun this has been a joy yeah it's been a lot of fun and i keep shining guys if you are new to stars in the morning light welcome we love you we adore you we we appreciate you and give you many thanks and hit that like button as lucky said drop a comment i love to hear from you and for those who have stuck with me over the past few weeks i adore you always so lucky bye dear hi